Today, we have the battle of the two Office Suite Titans, Microsoft Office versus LibreOffice. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're talking about the two big office suites out there, Microsoft Office versus LibreOffice. These two office suites are the behemoths of the office suite world. When you think of office suite, of course you think of Microsoft Office, but when you think of the more uh, alternatives and open source LibreOffice has risen above the rest to become a very viable candidate to replace Microsoft Office. So today we're going to look at five criteria, the same criteria we use in our other video where LibreOffice beat only Office. Oh, well, look at the video. You'll you'll see that the five criteria are design, app choice, features, cost and support. The first category we get into is design. Microsoft Office is a suite that is always on the cutting edge of user experience and user design. When you're the top of the food chain, you kind of dictate where designs of different program goes. So if you are the king of Word documents or word processing programs, then you kind of set the tone for what others who are trying to become more prominent and take your place will do unless it's something they're innovating. The sleek and cool designs, the minimalist kind of approach that is Microsoft Office makes it more pleasing to the eye, which, you know, that doesn't seem like that's a big thing, but if you are app developer or somebody who's been using a program for years, if it doesn't appeal to you and if design doesn't make sense to your eyes, then you're not gonna use it or you're not gonna be able to use it as well. Microsoft Office does that really well. They have a lots, lots of pictures. And if you scroll over the icons that are on the ribbon, they give you a little description on what each thing is. That helps people who aren't as familiar with your product or with what that function does in your product and not having to go and run to Google or Bing, whichever one you use. I don't know who uses Bing. Why would you use Bing? I don't know. If you want to do something new, you can kind of work your way through it. You don't have to hover over it and it says object. Okay, well, what is object or formula? Okay, what is formula? It gives you a little description that's key in design. Also, the ribbon changes. So you don't have those old school designs where you click on the menu bar like file or tool or edit or whatever, and a drop down menu pops down. What happens is when you click on home or insert or whatever view, then the ribbon changes and has all your options right there. And you have to, you don't have to go to the drop down menu and then go to another push out menu. It just makes things a lot better. It flows a lot better. On the other hand, LibreOffice has a design that lacks the same finish as the Microsoft Office product does. The color scheme is just gray and dull. It, it doesn't pop from app to app when you go from the word, the text document or the word processing document to the spreadsheet, to the PowerPoint iteration. It, it, it all looks the same. The ribbon is different, but it still has the same old school where we're talking about the drop down menu. And it's just, it feels not as polished as the Microsoft Office suite. You can hover your mouse or your, your pointer over an icon and it gives you the name of the icon, but it doesn't give you a description. The pictures that represent the icons aren't as vibrant and big. They're just there. So the design, LibreOffice isn't winning any awards on the design. So on design, I gotta give it to Microsoft Office. The next category is app choice. For the home edition, you get your basics. You get, for a yearly fee, you get the Word product, you get the Excel product, you get the PowerPoint product, you get OneNote, you get Outlook, you get Skype, and you get one terabyte of OneDrive, which is their cloud storage solution. As far as in the Microsoft Office suite, the ones that really make sense, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, those are your key. Those are the ones you always wanna have. Those are the ones that's gonna have you be the most productive. 
Now, as far as outlook, it's, they say it's premium and I use the premium one at work and I don't really see what the big difference is. Maybe some nuances about scheduling and calendars that I don't use that the premium option might be good. But from my experience, um, if you have a Gmail account or a Yahoo account or whatever, if it's for business or personal, I just don't see having the native Outlook app as being a positive. I mean, it, it's in my experience, the desktop app does pretty much what the web browser app does. I could be wrong, but as far as delegation and things like that, it's, it's nothing drastically different that would want me to want the Outlook app. One note, I don't use OneNote enough, but it does, you can take your notes with you across different devices and things like that. I mean, I just use the Notes app on my phone. OneNote isn't important to me. It may be important to you, but it's not important to me. Skype, let me tell you, Microsoft fumbled a bag on that one. But anyway, the appeal of Skype in this package is that they give you so many minutes of landline calling or calling the cell phones or whatever per month, and that's the benefit of that. Now you do get a little more storage with the OneDrive with your yearly subscription in this, and it, it's okay, you get the basics. LibreOffice, on the other hand, gives you a full suite of Office productivity apps, like their word processor, their spreadsheets, their PowerPoint alternative. You get math, the infamous math. We talked about it in a previous video. I don't use math, but math on the collegiate level and for people that need it and for people that use it, it's a very powerful tool that if it wasn't there, um, you would have to spend a, a considerable amount on a program that's similar. Then you have the database tool, which if you're in the database and you like to keep track of things using SQL and it, you know, it, it's a very useful tool that on the Office Suite, the Microsoft Office Suite, you'd have to pay more money to get access to that and turn it from a personal account to a business account, spending more money on top of that, right? So it gives you more apps at the base level than the Microsoft Office or Office 365 equivalent, right? For app choice, I got to give it the LibreOffice. They have more apps in their base than... Microsoft Office does. The next category is features. Microsoft Office has a ton of features. Just like we talked about in the design section, the ribbon is the key in all of these Microsoft Office products. The ribbon is the thing that you interact with the most. That ribbon makes things a lot more navigable and it makes it easier to use and it makes it the answer right there in your face. You don't have to go through menu after menu after menu to try to find what you want. Or if it's not there, you have to go and search for it. Everything you possibly could need is right there on that ribbon. And you're just really just clicking and it's like a slider almost where you slide in to get different choices. Where you click on here, click on that, and another ribbon pops up. One of the powerful features of all your Office products is a feature that I love called add-ins. And what add-ins are if Microsoft or companies like it have different templates or documents or what have you. You take a really good product and with the add-ins, you can take things from your other favorite vendors or other people who created some pretty cool templates and bring it over and make your office product that much more better. So it, it you have all these tools and if you find something you don't have here in the ribbon, you can use your add-in to bring more stuff in to make it more customizable for you. Also, when you have the Microsoft Office Suite that you pay for yearly, you can take your stuff with you. You can save it to your OneDrive. Let's say I'm working on something at my home and I wanna work at it at my office in two or three hours. Well, I can save it to my OneDrive and pick right back up where I'm at when I get to my office. It's a really, really good thing to have. You can keep all your things in one central location. You can always access it as long as you have 
access to the internet. With LibreOffice, what's good about its features is it's different enough from Microsoft Office where they don't look like a copycat, but it's similar enough if you've been using word processor, it doesn't matter if it was word perfect or whatever, that it's similar enough that if you've used a word processor in the past, that you can pick it up and, and easily use it. It's not a huge learning curve. Yeah, it looks different than Microsoft Office or Google Docs or what have you, but as far as functionality, it's right up there with Microsoft Office. There's nothing as far as functional, as far as making documents and um, doing spreadsheets. The presentation app, any of it, it's right there on par with Microsoft Office. You do have some compatibility issues sometimes, and that has to do with formatting. And the biggest thing is gonna be uh, fonts. If you're trying to go from LibreOffice to Microsoft Office, sometimes the fonts is what throws everybody off when it comes to compatibility. But if you stick with inside the LibreOffice ecosystem, the features are there. They do have a add-in function, it's called extensions. So you go to your extensions manager and you have to go out to the web, bring in the extensions and install it. But if you're used to working with open source software, you know that that's something you have to do with any open source software. If you dealt with a lot of open source software, you know that you have to go and do your own little maintenance because it's open source. Just like Chrome, Chrome has the extensions. If you want something else to make your browser better, you go and download the extension. Same way with LibreOffice. If you want something like they had flags of Brazil or they had different Arabic spell checkers or uh, Chinese punctuation. So it has these different functions that maybe Microsoft Office doesn't have that you can go for your specific need. I, I, I hadn't seen in my version of Office Chinese punctuation. I hadn't seen in my version of Office flags of Brazilian states. I hadn't seen that. And so with the open source community, it takes the, it takes people who need stuff can specialize and make stuff that they actually need and share with other people that may need the same thing like Chinese punctuation, right? When it comes to features, I gotta give it to both of them, Microsoft Office and LibreOffice. We're coming to the big one, and the big one is cost. Cost is the next category we're going into. And let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that's Microsoft. Microsoft Office has good products. They also have very smart accountants and business people. And if you go to, we deal with, in my workplace, CDW. And if you go to CDW, there are, they are authorized retailer of Microsoft. There's so many SKUs of Microsoft Office products. You have a, a monthly fee with these apps and then another monthly fee with less apps and then a monthly fee for the sync. It, it, it has to be over 200 SKUs at least for just government, let alone business. And, and, and it, it depends on how many people you have and how many computers is gonna be on and what, what levels are they gonna have. It's so many SKUs when it comes to Microsoft Office when it's a business application. Now, when you're doing it on a personal level, they have their set cost, whatever that is per year. But let's say, you know, I don't wanna pay the yearly price. And I only need Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Those are the three essentials, I think, that, you know, if you're in business or if you're in school or you do work from home or whatever, those are the three things you need. So if you just wanted Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint 2019, at the recording of this video, it's $249.99 for those three basic functions. That's outrageous. That is outrageous. I can pay you this yearly fee that you know you make tons of money on, or you can punish me and just these three things that I want, $250. Microsoft. Now, LibreOffice is free. Free. 100% free. I always say whenever you download and use an open source software that provides you value, that it pays for itself, 
you know, go to the donation link and drop a dollar or two just to show you thanks. I always do it, especially for things that I use on a daily basis. Like, you know, LibreOffice is one of those things I use. I just, just you know, to, to keep everything up and running, keep some servers going, just to keep this project going. Just a couple dollars here and there. But you do not have to spend any money on LibreOffice. And for that reason, the point goes to LibreOffice. The last category. The last category is gonna be support. Microsoft Office with the Office 365 yearly subscription comes with support. It's a uh, call-in support, um, I'm guessing tech support also, and chat support. I've never used Microsoft support, but I have used Microsoft Forms, which is another way you can get support for your product. And if their tech support that you call in is like the tech support you get on the form, it's a very robotic response. If it's not a level one where it they can have a book of problems and solutions that they can't copy and paste, if it's some unique problem, they kind of just be like, oh, well, you know, well, this is the solution. If it's not this, then I'm sorry, we can't help you. To fix certain problems, I have to, when it's not something like, hey, this file won't copy to this folder or something simple like that, I have to scour all types of forums and videos and call other people up that I know that are in IT and be like, hey, quick side note, you know that if you ask kids nowadays to, hey, pretend like you talk on the phone, unlike this, they go like this, which, you know, cell phone instead of like the analog. Anyway, I call some of my friends in IT and I'm like, hey, have you seen this problem before or just reaching out different ways. Yeah, there is support that you're paying for. And if you have a simple problem, I think you'll be okay. But if it's something a little more complex, you gotta scour the forums, scour YouTube. With LibreOffice, support is not there. Uh, it's open source. So with it being free, you also are your own tech support also. So just like you would do if you had Microsoft Office, you gotta scour the forums. They have a pretty good forum on their website, but you have other forums dedicated to LibreOffice. You have a whole bunch of YouTube videos that if you get stuck on something or you're trying to create something, you can just look up a YouTube video or go to whatever forum and find the answer you need. Given my experience with Microsoft Office and given my experience with LibreOffice, I gotta give the point to both of them. LibreOffice is the winner, kind of. There's only certain aspects that I wouldn't recommend LibreOffice. And the three criteria are this. One, if you have a office in, in a business setting that's above 20 people. Once you start getting above 20 people, I find that you want to start doing more things like email retention and if you're dealing with vendors that aren't using LibreOffice and you have to spend time converting documents so they can make sure they will be able to read it and make sure you have the right fonts so whenever you do try to convert it then they can open it up and just saving time in your workflow. I think once you get above that threshold of 20-ish employees using a Office Suite, Microsoft Office is that thing. The second reason is if you have somebody who just can't get over the fact that it looks different than Microsoft Office and you're willing to pay for it, go for it. You know, it's, it's all about you being comfortable and you having the correct tools to do your job or to do what you want to do at home. And the third caveat I wouldn't recommend if you have a certain look you like going for on your PowerPoint presentations and it makes that much of a difference where you have to spend the money to keep that same standard because Microsoft Office PowerPoint is a fantastic program. That's one that is the best program that they have. Everything else can be substituted. PowerPoint is just one of those things that is the gold standard. And if you absolutely need it, I mean absolutely need it, get it. But to me, LibreOffice is the winner. Well, that's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.